Hello everyone and welcome back to Do We Know Them? I'm Lily Marston here with Jesse Smiles and we have made it to episode 90, which is insane. Absolutely insane and I'm almost positive that we have also hit 90,000 subscribers when we're posting this, which is like, what? Love the alignment here. 90, it's our number. And we're so close to 100. That's the thing, I was like, I would love to hit 100 by the end of the year, but I, that feels a little ambitious. But like, can we be obnoxious and ask you to share it with like, Everyone share it with one person and I feel like we would hit it. I feel like when you tell people to share it, that makes them want to share it less. I know. Well, we never do though. So it's just like, let us be obnoxious for just one, this one time. Because we've already said once we hit 100,000 subscribers, we're kind of like, that's good. We yeah, yeah, fun. yeah. After that, I literally don't care. But um, yeah, if you guys want to, if you haven't subscribed, we do have a lot of people who watch us who aren't subscribed. That's so true. if you do want to just subscribe, I don't know. I mean, that way you don't have to see us in your recommended. It'll just show up in your subscription box. Okay, we'll shut up now. I, I feel like such a hypocrite asking anyone to subscribe because I don't subscribe to anyone. Oh yeah, I do. Like, I think I do to people I know just to like give them the support. But like even the channels I watch, they just come up in my recommended. So I don't think to subscribe. That's leaving too much up to chance for me. Like I need to know that I'm gonna see that person's videos if I like them enough. The algorithm's pretty strong. It is, it is. I have to I have to be honest. Do you want to address the um, elephant in the room before we get started? Oh no. What are you referencing? Because it's not the same thing that's in my head, I guarantee. What's in your head? I don't know, what's in your head? That I did not get canceled and I won the debate. <laughs> Oh my God, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking about too. Wait, what were you gonna say? Nothing, I don't know. Wait, what were you saying? What, what? You didn't win shit. Are you joking? I saw plenty of comments saying, I work at a restaurant and I think I it's saw perfectly some. fine. Overwhelmingly was, I'm on Lily's side. And I was like, really? <laughs> no. First of all, don't get too excited. You lost the oh mac my God. and cheese debate. Do you, need, do you want me to tally them? <laughs> you would. I just saw a lot of people in the industry agree with me that if you don't like your food and you genuinely don't like it, they would prefer you send it back. Okay, I wasn't saying like if I had a restaurant that that's what I would do. I was just saying, I get it. I wasn't very passionate about it. You were very passionate. No, you were pretty passionate. That's why I got passionate because you felt pretty strongly about it. Really? Well, yeah. Watch it back and tell me that. <laughs> I felt like it was a pretty heated debate. Yeah, because you were very passionate about it. I think the more that you kept saying that you get it, it, it made me actually angry. So then I just kept looking like, <laughs> but no, that's like, <laughs> I don't understand. Well, I'll let you have this one. Congratulations, I'm really happy for you. So um, guys, today's episode is kind of random because I feel like it's like a bunch of updates to like recent stuff we've talked about almost. Although we do have one topic that's like separate and we could start with that one. But we do have updates in the... Mr. Mr. Beast, Beast thing. Saga, yeah. Yeah. We'll start off with the topic that we couldn't finish last time because it, we just filmed for too long, but I have to say, I asked you guys for your opinions in the comments and not a single person left one. I did see one and they said they thought he was funny. And I was oh, like, no. God. Here we go. So... Okay, let me set this up because it's a journey. Heads up, I know nothing about this again. She sent me one TikTok and I was like, that's really alarming and I didn't look into it anymore. So I have to be honest, I do not know this person's real name. He's had many names on the internet and he has in his description because he has been banned so many times from TikTok. He has ban count 21. He has been banned 21 times on TikTok. Internet sweetheart is his bio. That used to actually be his username in like one of the times before he was <gasps> banned. Okay, so let me just like lay it out what this person does, right? Because I've been seeing him on my For You page for a hot minute now. What he does is he takes people who say typically very, very vile things to him, hate comments, you know, death wishes even, and he will clap back with about the most unhinged thing you can think of. And it usually involves him tattooing something in regards to that person who left the hate comment on his body. It's really committed. <laughs> right, I mean, I'm like, damn. At first I thought it was fake and then I was like, oh, that is actually not fake. Like he will have a comment of someone saying like, I hope you die or something like that. It's pretty horrible, right? Obviously a horrible comment to leave. He will find their Facebook, their personal Facebook. He will find that their grandpa died three years ago and he will get their grandfather tattooed on his body with like the Grim Reaper next to them. That level of petty is so Intense. off the deep end that I just like can't even fathom. And I have wanted to talk about this phenomenon mainly because 
So many people love this dude and they really, really love this level of petty. And so I want to go through these examples and I want to have like honest discussions. Like we're not strangers to like jokes and like, I'm not like a stranger to like chuckling at really petty humor or like, oh, I was gonna say, we love a good petty joke. This feels a bit more than a petty joke. I also just imagine, I mean, he gets a lot of them on his back. So I don't know his sex life or what it's like, but I'm just like, I could never... Like, if you're, like, an intimate with someone who you just see someone's grandfather with the Grim Reaper, you're like, ah! Oh, Jesus. So, there's a few. This one I found to be something. Quick question for you. When was the last time you visited Nana? I miss you so much, Nana. We gotta get you out of here. Good thing I brought my shovel. So for our listeners that are not viewing this, this is the comment that he's reacting to. It says, quick question. How long do you think it will take TikTok to delete you this time? Already reported you to corporate and the authorities, which honestly is not even that bad of a comment. Like in comparison to the things he reacts to typically, this is like kind of mild. Also, what did he do that they're reporting him to the authorities? I mean, just the shit that he does. But it's like, he doesn't do anything illegal. He's just like, weird yeah but you know how boomers are <laughs> they'll just be like i'm reporting you to the authorities straight to jail so he goes to her facebook and finds a post from the commenter it says r.i.p grandma beverly aka nana you are dearly missed and loved and he goes to this i don't know how he knew where this woman's gravestone was he goes to her gravestone and puts his lips on it and kisses it the way that i would lose my ever loving fucking shit if someone ever did that i mean my grandma's in my kitchen so you ain't getting her. But the way I would lose my fucking mind if someone touched like my family member's gravestone because I commented something they didn't like. You think I'm maybe just being a fucking, I don't know, I'm being nitpicky. I don't know because people, again, they find this guy funny. They think this whole shtick is funny. I would be ready to throw hands. I think it's disturbing. I don't think I would personally, as long as he didn't like If it was your it grandma, I don't think I'd Or really... like someone you knew and he was kissing the gravestone and joking about taking her out with a shovel, you wouldn't... Well, I think it's fucking disgusting, but as long as he didn't do it, you know? I mean, I'm not saying I'm gonna go like throw hands actually, but I'm saying like, wouldn't you be enraged? Like actually enraged? Yeah, but I probably wouldn't engage anymore because like then what's he gonna do? Oh no, 100%. I totally agree with that. But like, this is and insane. also I'm like, was it just like a really serendipitous coincidence that he happened to like live in the same place? Like, I know I have so many questions. Like, is it really her gravestone? I don't know. Or does he do it for attention and maybe like it's just a random one and he just pretends? Could be he found a gravestone of someone named Beverly. Really. I am gonna just go like choose random ones because he does this quite often. You told me that I was gonna go down there. So I went ahead and hopped down there and I took you with me along with the grandbaby. So you guys, if you're listening, someone commented that he was going to hell, I guess. And then he took a Christmas photo of this person and grandchild. And now they are tattooed on his ass, but he has added devil horns, a tail. That's and... not his ass. That's his back. Sorry. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I see the crack you think was his crack, but that's not No, I really don't know why it was that ass. That made no sense. So he has tattooed them on his sh like left shoulder and added devil horns and a tail and they're, um, was it, or is that part of it? I don't know. It's hard to tell what tattoos, like they all intertwine with I each know, other at this there's point. There's a name and then it's Lilia, I don't know, and, uh, or Lily, maybe? It's in cursive. Oh my God, is this foreshadowing? <laughs> it's the tattoo me. of us. Um, <laughs> I'm already tattooed on someone's ass, so. I have to say too, um, and this is no disrespect, please don't tattoo me on your body. Bro, his tattoo artist does him dirty. Despite like all the shit of like morally is this correct, all this stuff. His tattoo artist does him so dirty. The portraits he gets are the most horrible portraits I've ever seen of anyone. I feel like they're kind of like a specific style though. No, oh my God. I have to show you the one of the grandpa I with mean, the I Grim Reaper. I haven't seen a lot. I'm just judging off that one. Like look at that portrait of that woman. And yes, it's meant to like, I don't know what the degrading is uh, because she's uh, one of those people that boycotted Target because of the trans yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, got her with a beard which already i'm like that's kind of fucked up like i'm not even saying just because of her beliefs i'm saying like even like for the trans movement like i don't know like that's interesting i, I don't think he's doing it in support of the trans movement well that's the thing is like he does 
in a certain way. Like there was this one woman who was homophobic and he got a picture of her son, I think next to like him and they were kind of like kissing and stuff. And like, I think that he's against like homophobic and trans comments, but like the things he does like this, for instance, I'm like, I don't know how for the trans movement it is to have like a woman with a beard and like acting like this is like this like caricature of a trans person. I don't know. His decisions seem much more fueled by his pettiness than his uh, advocacy. That's, <laughs> yes, that's what I'm trying to say. We don't have to like dive too much into his actual like history because not only is there not that much there because he's been banned so many times but that's the gist of it right so that is what he does and people either really love it or really hate it and the thing that I found interesting was like the people that really hated it were seemingly on the side of like bigots and like people who were anti-trans and like and I'm like wait a second like why am I finding myself not liking this content or like not thinking this is like correct I'm not with them you know what I mean like that type of moment where you're like seeing who's for or against something. it seems like a pretty universally thing that most people would think is I don't know like it's weird because when you're showing them to me like I'll kind of like giggle because it's like oh my god that's so absurd I have giggled at a few of them for sure especially in the beginning when I first started seeing them but I don't actually think it's funny that's the thing this is not like the humor that's actually gonna make me like, oh my God, this is hilarious. It's kind of just like, a, oh my God. It's that's like shocking. Like, so I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> and I think most of the time it's like, okay, if you're an adult and you're commenting on social media and you're saying some fucked up shit, like people tell them, eat a bullet, crazy shit, then you're gonna get whatever you get. This type of shit, what I'm about to show you right now is where I'm like, no, dude, like you, not to quote Ken, but like you're lost in the sauce right now. Like I, I genuinely feel like you're, you've gone too far. So this is the one that actually got sent into us by a viewer who was like, hey, I was a fan of this guy and I saw this particular clip and I thought, yikes, what the fuck? They also sent us a screenshot of a comment of someone that was like, hey, dude, like I love you, but you know, this might be a little bit too far. And the comments answering back were interesting for sure and kind of indicative of the people that... I think support him. I do think it's a little not like funny haha, but like funny weird that people do get so triggered by like, I mean, this one we're about to watch, I think is super gross and he shouldn't have done. But in general, it's on his body. It's not like he's like constantly broadcasting it to like all of these people. And it's more like, I mean, he did that to himself. Like, I feel like he's the one <laughs> suffering more in this situation, you know? Yes, I do agree. Cause like, I feel the same way where I'm just like, all right, joke's on you, I Why guess. Did you do that? But he yeah. does broadcast it to people constantly. Like he's always showing his like whole back and he'll revisit the ones that he's done and shit. Like, it's not like he gets it once and never talks about it again. It's not like that person is then receiving like an onslaught of hate. I think they do actually. How do people even know who it is? Because he'll like show their Facebook and all the shit that they can find them on. And I'm pretty sure they get a steady amount of uh, messages and stuff. But anyway, this is the TikTok that I was like, oh my God. I'm not going to react. I'm going to be the bigger person. I'm going to walk away. Christina, do you think that maybe you've been paying too much attention to my TikTok and not paying enough attention to Brendan? Okay, uh, so copyright, we need to kind of narrate this for you a little bit. The caption says, I'm ready for at modern day angel to eat a bullet, LOL, he's a waste of oxygen. Obviously a fucking heinous comment. Like what the fuck is wrong with you? Yes. So he's saying, why are you wasting so much time on me when you should be wasting time on Brendan? And then shows a picture of a child and then goes to this person's Facebook, again, shows her Facebook and her Facebook had a post that says, child protective services just took Brendan because his piece of shit father, Randy Ortiz, lied and told them I'm an addict. First of all, a bit of an overshare. Um, I don't know if I would have posted that as my Facebook status. Oh my God, but I know so many people who would share shit like that. Facebook is crazy. I mean, they definitely didn't think it would ever get out there on this level. But yeah, a lot of people overshare on Facebook. It's kind of a thing. Oh my God. The tattoo that he gets is of this kid, which I will say because his tattoo artist does not slay too hard. It's a little bit not looking like the kid. I will admit that. Well, and because the tattoo shows the kid wearing a fucking mask that says property of CPS, child protective services underneath. And then it says bye bye Brendan underneath. It's a deep cut, I will say. If you don't have anything funnier, like if you can't sit there for about 20 more minutes and come up with something funny about the person who left you this comment, if that's your shtick, 
do that. Like to me, I'm like, this is lazy. Like you found one thing that you're like, oh, sucks for her. So let me bring this kid into it. How about you fucking don't? Like this kid has nothing to do with it. He doesn't strike me as like a comedian. It's just like he wants to do what is gonna trigger them the most. But like, even if the rest of them, if you wanna say they're funny and like you enjoy what he's doing and being petty, I feel like tattooing children on you, other people's children, um, is kind of crossing a line. I mean, it's beyond. And again, yeah, it doesn't really look like him, but that doesn't matter. It's the principle. So the viewer that sent this in also sent in a screenshot of someone kind of calling him out and saying, I love your videos and you ate Christina up, but what if the kid is uncomfortable with it? He's been through enough. And then someone replied to her, God, I'd love to just, and then it has a plunger with a, a baby. I I'm gonna throw. What does that mean? Uh, that they'd like to plunge the baby? Am I lost? What? What is that? Oh my God. The next person says, I'm gonna touch you. Like that's his followers. You know what I mean? Like that's the people who are like, this is fucking hilarious. The main sentiment that I see on his page, like pretty much anytime I come across any of his TikToks is people like really, really appreciating his level of petty. Like either, hey, this is the type of petty I aspire to be or like, you're my people, dude. Like, yeah, you fucking get it. Like you go low, I go to hell or what the fuck is that saying? You know what I'm talking about? Like people who are like, fuck. Fuck that. Like, okay, guys, can we all take a breather? Again, I'm like, who's the real winner here? I'm failing to see. Well, that's the thing is like, I may sound a little Catherine McBroomy right now when I'm talking about like energies and stuff, but even things like tattoos, like anything that lives on or around you is like, a strong, strong, strong impact on your energy as a whole, as a human being, the type of shit you bring into your life, like that genuinely impacts your soul. And like having all this living on your body, I cannot imagine feeds your soul, as Oprah would say. Well, I mean, even if you didn't want to feed into that kind of energy, the energy you'd have to be having already to do this feels like you're not in the healthiest space. Place. Okay, that's kind of what I thought. I'm like, okay, I've been super petty. Like, I've been so petty that I'm kind of embarrassed of how petty I've gone in the past. You know what I mean? Like, that happens. Because you're overwhelmed with, like, your frustration and you just want to, like... Or, like, even just for entertainment purposes. Like, in my story time era, I was unnecessarily petty in a lot of situations. And I am embarrassed looking back at it. But trying to do that for comedy and, like, being whatever... That's one thing. This isn't, it doesn't even feel like that. Like maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he Different is just trying to be funny. But yeah, it feels like something in his soul, like something's wrong. We need a therapist to weigh in on this. Katie Morton, where are you? Just kidding. He did get some like pushback, obviously, whenever he brings the children into it, because I think even the most petty of people can understand that like kids have nothing to do with it. Let's not fucking bring children. Like what the fuck? That's so low. What? And even like what that comment said that it's like, yeah, you're doing this to get the mom but like what about the kid that you just got tattooed on you yeah well he got a lot of comments like that and he did address it so he's responding now to christina who has left a comment on the tattoo video and she's not pleased understandably so but uh she says let's have a conversation about how you used illicit means to get a hold of my facebook posts Tell your followers about that. Feels like an interesting grievance to have considering what he did, but um, also what illicit means. I wonder if she's private and maybe he made a fake account to get in. That could have been something, but I don't know if that's illicit. It feels like a, a weird response to have. Yeah, I'd be like, hey, maybe don't fucking tattoo my child on your body, sir. Exactly. Priorities, but yeah, anyway, he responds to this. <laughs> Let's have a conversation about how this is what you're worried about and you seem to have no interest in regaining ownership of your crib lizard. How do I go about the process of adopting an amphibian? Because I'm starting to think he'd be better off with me. What? Here's the thing. He thinks he's really funny because he's like, let me just be fucking like as petty and all this stuff. I'm like, he's not in a crib though. He's like fucking five or six. Like, it's like, that's not even funny. Did he call him a crib lizard? Is that like a, a term? Oh yeah. Like childless people who like, yeah, they'll call kids crib lizards sometimes. <laughs> I, I know. What? <laughs> Welcome to the internet. It's very interesting here. But he tries again to like make it seem like, oh, I'm just being funny also i'm like listen i'm not the end all be all of comedy okay we'll say that much but like that's not fucking funny like there's no effort he's not even a kid who's in a crib so even that is not funny and like all the comments are like crib lizard knee slapper like it's just i'm i'm lost here i'm lost i'm i'm, I'm not understanding yeah and like i mean i have to agree with him weird thing to comment on I again agree. When yeah your kid just got tattooed on him and like with the cpa yeah it's interesting but um weird people on both sides of this yeah <laughs> he actually goes on further to explain how things work on his page because someone left a comment that said dude attack the adults not their children the kids have done 
nothing, I'm assuming, is what that comment said. Which, valid, that's what I said. Extremely valid. And this is his response. Let me explain to you how things work on my page. You come into my comments being negative or disrespectful or insulting me. The baby, the grandma, the goldfish. Everyone is getting dragged from here to Timbuktu. Respectfully. I would say disrespectfully, but you know. <laughs> I'm not like at all surprised by that. I'm not I'm not surprised that that's his take. I'm not surprised that that's how he feels because that's very obvious. It seems like nothing's off limits. Yeah, nothing's off limits. And you know what? If that's what you want to do, then I guess do it. And whatever comes with that is your like deal. Like I, that, I'm not gonna have to worry about it. But I just think like in general, if he ever watches this, because funny enough, he is trying to get on the H3 podcast and like he wants to get on podcasts <gasps> and like have interviews about this. And I'm like, Okay, because I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Ethan might have reacted to something about this recently. So I I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, You probably don't know, but his origin story. Did he just like have face tattoos and people just didn't like how he looked? So they started attacking him for that. And then he started getting people tattooed. Like, what was the trajectory of how we got here? That's a really good question. Because he has been banned so many times, that's almost impossible to answer. Unless someone's, oh, like, been yeah, there yeah. since the beginning. Because you can't go back in his page right now and see. Honestly, I'm not sure. But I have been getting his, like, content suggested to me for quite a while. Probably since he started on TikTok. And it's always been the same thing. I don't know. It could have been just one person who came to him and was like, Ew, you're tattooed. That's disgusting. And then, like, yeah. that's how it started. Does he do any other content besides this no not that i understand there, no. there's no like non-petty responses to people you mean him just like having a good day and vlogging it no actually what he did post about recently which is quite interesting is someone who commented let's get a venmo cash app something going so us supporters can contribute to your tattoo fund and people have been sending him money so that he can do this more often what? And honestly, like, okay, so last episode, I asked you guys, what are your opinions on this person? I didn't give any kind of inkling on how I felt. And again, not many people responded to that. No, it's okay. It's all right. Uh, but apparently the one person that did was like, oh, I find that person funny. And I think a lot of people do. And the reason why I wanted to even talk about this, because honestly, when I told my brother I was going to talk about it, he's like, what if he gets you tattooed? Uh, free promo. Honestly, I really wouldn't care. Like, I wouldn't care, but what if he tattooed my children? Then I would care. See, yeah. Well, I mean, don't say that. <laughs> well, it's like the, the fucking boogeyman. It's just, like, what, you can't talk about this person? Can we not have a conversation about why something's good or bad without you tattooing people that I know on you? Even if he did get my children tattooed on him, it wouldn't look like it them. It wouldn't look like, <laughs> like I'm just saying, his tattoo artists keep doing him dirty. Honestly, again, like, even if he does, like, revisit them, I don't know, it just seems like the person he's getting tattooed, like, it might be weird and irk you, but it doesn't feel like it's really doing anything. I get that. It's kind of like the only power it has is what you give it. Like, I'm never gonna see you in real life, so, like, go off, I guess. If I'm being honest, I don't think I would have talked about any of this if it didn't have to do with the kids, and, like, even, I know yeah, that's it's still, like, yes, they're adult, but, like, even even going after the grandparents and stuff. I'm like, what the fuck did they do to you? Like, I don't know. I just can't indulge in it. It just makes me feel icky. I just, to him, I'm kind of like, okay, now that you got that tattoo, do you feel better now? Because... Well, obviously not because the kid's doing it. And it's like, okay, well... Yeah, like, what? just like, what's the point? You know, eventually you will run out of room. And then also, you it's not lost on me that like... He's paying for them. Yeah, like I, the only person really losing here feels like him. That's true. Yeah, that is true. And again, I am not in any way, shape or form condoning the comments that people leave. They're unhinged and fucked up. But like, do you know how much easier it would have been to block that person and delete their comment and not spend any money or get their face tattooed on you? Like, it's just like, okay. Also, I know like so not the point, but Jesse has his TikTok open right now and his pinned comment, I'm going to assume is older. Like look at his forehead and it says like, sweetheart, there's a key, there's it's a beauty, there's a diamond. Then go to one over. What happened? Hello, <laughs> oh shit. He, he like scratched it all out. Literally, it looks like he took a tattoo gun and like, <laughs> like it's bl like bloody even. <laughs> Like, it looks like scars. How do you notice shit like this? I did not notice that at all. Just the important things. This is not someone who's doing something and thinking anything out at all. It's kind of someone that's completely going like impulse, 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 impulse. And I just feel like in about a year, he's gonna look back and be like, holy hell, what the fuck just happened? Like, I don't think he's entirely clear-minded. That's how I feel about this particular situation. And I'm worried for all the other people who wish they could be doing this. That's the thing. It's like, it's one thing to like, think it's a little amusing, but to think that it's like, I wish I could do that. It's like, 
what, do you? Like, oh my God. I wonder if at this point, like, people are just commenting to get tattooed on his body. Like, how does he differentiate? I just feel like this is just a weird road to go down because you can't win here. I was going to say, it all comes back to it. I don't feel like he's coming out on the winning side. Of this. No. How many followers did he have? 226,000 followers on this account. And not he's enough banned. to be getting that many tattoos of people on you. <laughs> but anyway, that's pretty much it. Let us know what you guys think. I mean, if you like him and you think he's funny, genuinely, like, tell us why i want to understand the brain of people who actually like ha ha kiki with him good morning they don't know it's morning <laughs> well we're telling them it's morning because hi we're filming on monday morning and uploading this monday at some point because holy shit you guys the twist of this story is insane lily has found this at about i don't know four in the morning my time and i was like we need to film in the morning this is ridiculous i mean literally i just barely brushed my hair i look like shit i'm like let's we have to film it Yeah, up. honestly, and if my eyelid is sticking to itself, I apologize. That's happened before. I know some of you guys saw it, but I was rushing and my makeup was a disaster. Uh, disaster. But anyway, um, I haven't gone to sleep. And <laughs> <laughs> Good start. A lot of people say we don't research, which sometimes we don't. <laughs> don't say that. Research that much beforehand. <laughs> but since I'm always doing the assets, I do a lot of fact checking after the fact, not even really intentionally. I just like kind of hyper focus and then accidentally the next thing I know I've looked way too deep and I'm not using any of the things that I found. I just like wanted to know. But um, in this case, it really came in handy because in the last episode, Jesse had asked you guys to comment like your thoughts on the guy after you looked at his TikTok and she wasn't going to share her opinion. So then she was referencing those comments in this episode and I went to go pull them. And one of you guys revealed that this motherfucker. <laughs> I'm so shook. The tattoos that he's getting, the like all the pictures of that he's gotten off people's Facebooks, they're fucking stock photos. He is a sham. My brain almost exploded. I was like, what do you mean? She actually sent me the grandfather photo, the one that I mentioned of the Grim Reaper. And Lily sends me a stock photo website with that guy's picture. And I'm like, no, no fucking way this guy does this. And it's cause that person commented, they're like, Google elderly man with oxygen tube. And you do, and it pops up immediately. First of all, um, you couldn't have looked a little deeper. Like, it was like, that was <laughs> kind of a rookie move because the rest of them aren't just stock photos, I guess. They're oh yeah, because from... Lily found an article after she found the first stock image and it was an entire article on basically how he uses these fake photos. And I'm like, how did we not know that? And how is nobody talking about it? Because not a single person in his comments, I don't know if he filters it out. I don't know what, I had never heard of this. Because I don't think people it. know. <laughs> Oh my God, this is wild. But so what happened was we knew that the one was a stock photo, but then I started looking at the other ones and I pulled up specifically because I know the one that was like the most controversial was um, Brendan, the little kid. So I look up that TikTok and I look at it and I was like, that fucking looks like a stock photo too. Like, and now that I thought about it, like a lot of, they were kind of weird pictures. Like they all were like kind of old or like, they just had like a vibe about them. And so I was like, oh my God, are they all stock photos? So I reverse image searched it and nothing came up. When I had reverse image searched the old guy, it did come up. So I was like, okay, interesting. So maybe it's not and there's just that one. And actually it's funny because your first reaction wasn't that this guy was not using real photos on purpose. Jesse's first reaction was that people were trolling him and then he didn't realize he was using stock photos. I do not think that is the case. At, well, I mean, now we know that's not the case. So then I tried to figure out if some of the other ones were stock photos. And after the Brendan one didn't work, I just searched like his username, TikTok, stock images, and then um, tattoos, hoping that like someone else had found it on like Reddit or something and they were just gonna do the work for me. Well, it wasn't Reddit, but there was an article on medium.com that is titled Hero and Villain, How One TikTok Creator Uses Style Gan Images to Craft a Hated Persona, and hated is in quotes, through manufactured outrage. Honestly, I even kind of like glanced at the title at first and I was like, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that he's basically catfishing people and making hater accounts and then getting those tattooed on him, but they're not real. So it's like, yes, he's still getting tattoos, but not of real people. Well, when I told my husband this, he thinks that he is not getting tattooed. He thinks he's like, well, if that's fake, then how do we even know that it's real that he's getting the tattoos at all? I mean, that's a very, very valid point. They're never red if you think about it. The ones that he gets that are haters comments, when you first get a tattoo, it's like really red and raised and irritated. 
And now to come to think of it, it never seems that way. And if you're asking like, how could he fake a tattoo? Well, I've seen it on TikTok. There are websites who literally like you can upload a logo or a picture or anything you want. And they make you this temporary tattoo that's like a sticker and you put it on your skin and it lasts like a couple weeks to a month. He might just be getting a bunch of stickers and putting them on repetitively. Who knows? Look, put that one with the letters or that one. Oh, that is ca- actually. They're kind of red. But also that one's not a person. So maybe True. some of them yep. are real and some aren't. This one looks pretty red. Oh my God. But even the TikTok you're showing right now is of him on a Vice article that Lily just found right before we filmed. And he's just like, I'm on Vice, super grateful. And everyone's like, yes, like this level of petty, like I love it. It's all fake. This is so crazy to me. Like we already thought he was like a little unhinged. And honestly, I think maybe he's more unhinged for it being fake. Honestly, because he's trying again, like I mentioned, he's trying to get on H3 podcast, Inked Magazine, having his followers tag him in all these like people's social medias to get noticed. And I'm like, that is interesting. And even the Vice article is an interview with him. Like where he's talking right. about it and very much playing into the fact that this is all real. But let me pull up the Brendan one for one last comparison. And then I actually have a reason why I would think it's fake too. Yeah, the one of Brendan doesn't look red or raised at all. Especially a portrait with shading like that, it would be extremely red and irritated. And it's not, the one of Brendan is not at all. And if it is healed, that's a fully healed tattoo, which would take weeks. And he's not gonna wait weeks to videotape it. So I think the Brendan one's bullshit. Yeah, look, that's that, that's bullshit. That is not a real tattoo. <gasps> okay, so another reason I don't think they're real is because do you remember you said when we were looking at the one with the lady and he put a beard on her? I was like, I don't think his main goal is advocacies. <laughs> and you were like, oh well, no, but I think like he he did one tattoo that I remember where he was like kissing, almost kissing a guy or something. I looked through all the TikToks and I know he's been banned or whatever a few times. So I was like, well, maybe the TikTok's not there but he has a bunch of videos where he basically shows his whole body and like all of his tattoos. And it's not there? I didn't see any where it was <gasps> two guys that looked like they were about to make out. So I didn't know if you were mistaken or if I no, just couldn't I, see bitch, it. I am not. I know exactly what it was. It was him and then the guy that was the lady's son who he was responding to was leaning into him and the guy had all the face tattoos because the woman was criticizing him for his face tattoos so he put his face tattoos on the man. What if like when he got banned, he's like, well, nobody's really gonna fucking remember. So like, I don't need to keep putting that one on. Well, and that was my point is that even like with this Christina one, if you click Christina, her account isn't there. And I had like tried searching. I mean, Christina Ortiz is not exactly a- uh, Super unique name. Rare name. I searched the exact text of the Facebook status and stuff, couldn't find it. I mean, maybe she made her Facebook private, but I feel like it still might even come up on Google. I couldn't find anything. Like nothing was coming up. And then finally I found this article and I was like, oh, maybe that's why, because they don't exist. Uh, okay, so meet modern day Angel, also known online as Face Tap Baby to maybe Didn't someone, that, but not cool. to me, but okay. His TikTok account boasts that he's been banned 20 times. In previous iterations of his account, he's referred to himself as TikTok's most hated creator. Oh my God, this all seems so stupid mm, looking back. Convenient. I've been able to independently confirm the existence of 11 previous accounts. So many bands would certainly align with the idea of being a hated creator, but I've come to find that some things aren't exactly as they seem. Shout out to who wrote this article, cause like talk about breaking news. So he says, I first came across Across this account on TikTok on October 3rd when I noticed Modern Day Angel responding to a comment from someone named Norma Robertson. Norma had commented, good luck finding a romantic partner. In his video response, Modern Day Angel humorously responded, I have great news. I did find a romantic partner. You're so... Oh, oh, that's the one. the one you're talking that's about. That's the one I'm talking about. Oh my God. Your son, in that moment, the video displayed a screenshot of a Facebook account with the name Timothy Robertson. What immediately caught my attention was that I recognized Timothy Robertson as an image generated by StyleGAN, an artificial intelligence tool used to create lifelike images of people who do not exist. No, is that him? Uh, I don't, maybe that's not the one I'm talking about because he had the tattoos. Maybe there's multiple. Update, the image associated with a fictitious Norma Robertson Robertson TikTok account has been identified as a woman named Maxine Patton. So sometimes he's getting style jam photos or whatever. And then sometimes he's just picking random people 
and like recreating a profile for them. I guess. Which is kind of genius because it's like, if that gets called out or identified, it could just be someone like trolling him. Like, I feel like he could always fall back on like, well, I didn't know I'm being trolled by a bunch of fucking haters. You know what I mean? I think that's the route he's gonna go. But this is obviously super intentional and like, there's a pattern. Yeah, well, it says, the use of a style again generated image on any social network typically raises a red flag. Some individuals employ these images for a sense of authentic anonymity to protect their privacy online during genuine conversations while others may have less authentic intentions. Well, so basically this guy said, the author is saying that he usually finds that these images are used to have accounts that are like spewing conspiracy theories oh. or harassing people because then it looks like a real person, but it's not and it can't be traced back to anyone. Without jumping to conclusions regarding modern day Angel's motives, I conducted a search for a Publix employee named Timothy Robertson on Facebook. Oh yeah, yeah, because the Facebook said he worked at Publix. And then he says, however, I discovered that such an account does not exist. There is no Timothy Robertson account that corresponds to the details provided. This opened the door for further investigation. A later video shows modern day Angel getting the style GAN image associated with the artificial Timothy Robertson tattooed on his back. Norma Robertson was not pleased. Oh my God, look at like the comments all seem so fake looking back. It says, you're not getting away with this. You got a tattoo of my son without his knowledge or permission. I feel sick to my stomach. And even, you know how you mentioned something about like they seem like they were all kind of coming from boomers. Yeah, and also didn't I mention that the tattoos are ugly and like they're not made well, that makes sense that it would be like a sticker. Cause like they're all fucked up portraits that look blurry. I'm well, like, that's true. what? That's true. Uh, in another video, an account named Joshua ha Holm uh, left a disparaging comment about modern day Angel's tattoos. In his response video, modern day Angel demonstrates his investigative prowess by sharing a screenshot of a document where we see Joshua Holm had lost custody of his child. Uh, his audience loved it. There are some problems here. First, Joshua Holmes' account, like the artificial Timothy Robertson, used a style GAN image. Jesus. Second, Joshua Holmes is the name of a lead singer of the band Queens of the Stone Age, who also happened to have lost a public custody battle. Both the Joshua Home account and the response video were removed after reaching out to Modern Day Angel for comment. Shut <laughs> the flying fuck up up right now. I am losing it. So he picked a name that was associated with a custody battle so he could take that, but he made a fake picture and catfished everyone with it. Oh my God. I know that people go to like crazy lengths to get famous for whatever, but like this is so intricate and complex like well and also thinking about like before it was already questionable what he was doing whether the tattoos are real or not it's just like the principle of like your image and again the energy you're putting out there and all this shit that was already questionable when he was actually supposedly getting these vile comments now if you turn it around and you're like oh so like you're the one generating all of this this becomes kind of sad. It's uh, not even kind of, it's very sad. It's kind of like, okay, so you're choosing what you want to be known for on the internet and this is it. Interesting. Uh-huh. I don't even know how you come up with this. Like, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever... And also, you mentioned it, um, earlier how, like, he's spending all the money to get... Like, tattoos are so expensive. No, he's not. He's getting stickers, girl. <laughs> if he's Allegedly. just getting stickers, let me tell you, that's probably not as expensive. <laughs> Perhaps the strangest and most troubling interaction that Modern Day Angel has had was posted on October 11th. A user named Miranda left a comment on one of Modern Day Angel's videos. The comment read, Your tattoos are as atrocious as you are. You are a danger to the platform. Shortly thereafter, a response video was created, which seemed to feature a Facebook post, a photo of the commenter's child, and details about the child's daycare center. Oh my god, we missed that one. We didn't even react to that. It says the video then transitioned to a live shot of the daycare's front entrance. Oh my god. Modern Day Angel suggested he would be picking up Miranda's child from daycare, and there he was at the entrance. If it were true, it would be terrifying. And look at that picture. Like, they're all just a little weird. And it's, I mean, now it's, obviously we know they're all AI, and that's why they look fucking weird. But also they have a stock photo, like, quality about but them. even if this what like this is a choice to do as if you're like stalking a child that's fucking like again even though this is fake you're still so weird for that oh my god it says the image of the child like the images of timothy robertson and joshua home was a style gan image there was no miranda and there was no public facebook post about a child's daycare provider the video is no longer available when examining the usernames of some of the accounts that have left the comments certain similarities arise that support the suggestion that these are fabricated characters. We see examples like Misty Johnson 555 and Miranda 555. Misty Johnson's account and video response featured two style gen images. A group of first 
slash last name accounts ending in numbers including Tabitha Patterson 1, Norma Robertson 7, Melinda Carlisle 7. Like, they're all the most... He's commenting on his old videos. Oh my God, it's giving me when I used to request myself to make covers on YouTube. That is embarrassing. <laughs> Don't tell anyone that I told you Everyone's that. been asking for this. So like, not only is he faking his shit, but he's faking like a lot of the support to like kind of seem like everyone's also vibing with it. And then everyone just kind of goes with it. I, I'm so confused. Oh, the article, the person who wrote it actually chatted with Modern Day Angel. That's interesting. Oh yeah, he said in a TikTok direct message, I inquired about the use of style gan images and the creation of characters to enhance his engagement. His response was concise and defensive. In his reply, he said, the videos are meant for entertainment. Oh my God. Stop it. I don't know why you're under the impression they're AI, LOL. I informed him of the numerous users and their fictitious family members whose images were uh, generated by StyleGAN and asked what might have motivated the creation of characters. He has not responded. Oh, this is, I sent this as a quote to Jesse when after I had read part of the article. It was my favorite line. It's, he takes on the roles of both hero and villain, defending himself from his own provocations, all while his audience cheers him on, unaware that they're witnessing a one-man performance. <laughs> that is the most epic quote ever. I can't wrap it up better myself. We did have the Vice article, but this is a very long update and we'll just, you know, there's a Vice article on it if you want to check it out. Let me read one quote from the Vice article. People say, oh, that's going to be on your body forever like what are you thinking i'm like bro look at my face you really think i care about some tattoos on my body when my face looks like this come on now it's funny to me i've actually spent about ten thousand on troll tats all together one more it says do you ever feel like you've gone too far yeah sometimes but i don't feel bad because these people kind of go out of their way to criticize me and harass me for no reason also if you're on tiktok i don't know how you wouldn't know my reputation on the app i feel like a lot of people just come at me on purpose because they want me to do what i do no because you made them all up yeah this is so weird and the fact that he didn't respond to the guy who wrote the article wow just you really act hard on the internet what are you gonna do get a sticker of me oh my god this is nuts like i it was truly the twist of the century it was, I was not expecting we that. could it not hop on camera to update you so yeah that's it we'll stop now but that's the update isn't that something never say we don't do research again thank you but anyway, um, we can move on to our next topic now, which is a Mr. Beast update. So the last time we spoke about Mr. Beast was during the whole Rosanna Pansino thing. I think it was like two or three episodes back. And basically, Rosanna had called Mr. Beast out for unfair editing, I guess you would say, but also unfair treatment on set to her and yada, yada, yada. You can go see that episode. It's a very, very long thing and there's a lot to it. Now, there's been some updates. So after we, of course, <laughs> film that episode, it's always after, like literally right after something happens. I even filmed an update for the episode. <laughs> when you had done the update, where were we at at that point? Um, At that point, she had deleted everything. She said she should have kept everything private and like gone to Mr. Beast. And she also alluded to the fact that death threats were kind of a reason for that. Yeah, she said like, I'm not going to say that the thousands of death threats that I got, that they didn't play a factor which I said in my update, I'm like, I absolutely believe that. I also feel like there's probably some other factors at play because it seemed like such a drastic backtrack of everything she had been doing. Cause she didn't even just like, post the original stuff. She was responding to Keemstar. She was like really all in, it seemed like. And then it, all of a sudden yeah. it was like, never mind. And we were like, what, what, what do you mean? And I know that a lot of people were theorizing maybe he had threatened legal action because of the NDA or something. Okay, I saw so many people bringing up Jack Septicai and apparently Jack Septicai had a situation with him. Do you know what that was? So he did a lie detector video with some of his friends. And honestly, I don't actually know like the full scope of this because I, I guess Mr. Beast responded to it, but I felt like that alone was weird because it didn't seem like something that warranted a response. <laughs> now Jack, a completely unrelated question. <laughs> Do you like Mr. Beast? No. Oh, Jack. Oh. Do you think Mr. Beast ruined YouTube? Yes. Now, in all honesty, Jack, why? Because it became more about views, money, and popularity than it did about having fun. You just don't think you had fun playing Squid Games? You don't think you had fun riding on yachts? If he Building had, wells if, in Africa? I don't know. If he had fun doing those videos, they'd be longer. We'd see the fun. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I thought you were going to get me yeah. with that one, didn't you? Who's the YouTuber you hate the most? I don't know. There's a lot of groomers and pedophiles on our platform. <laughs> 
there's an article about it and it says, in a now deleted response, Mr. Beast called the comments insanely disrespectful. And then it goes on to say, it's a quote from him saying, so I ruined YouTube because I didn't buy a mansion in sports cars and instead reinvested my money into making content slash focused on doing good and inspiring kids to help people. And then it quotes Jack Septiguy and says, if he had fun, the videos would be longer. And he said, what does that even mean, LOL? You think I'd give up every hour of my life for 14 years if I didn't have fun with a skull emoji? This clip is insanely disrespectful in my opinion. And obviously there is so much I could say about his content, but I'll just take the punches and be the bigger man, sigh. I hate when people do that. They're like, so much I could say, but I won't. And then it says, however, shortly after the debate began, both Mr. Beast and Jack Septicai shut down any conversation about a possible beef brewing online. And Mr. Beef tweet, <laughs> Mr. Beef, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beast tweeted, we message, we're Gucci now. And then Jack responded with a smiley face and a cowboy hat and a thumbs up. Emoji. Wait, wait, wait. So people, cause I met, I saw a lot of people mentioning like Jack Septicai in the sense that he was silenced and they also believe Roseanne was silenced so do they think like he was like threatened in dms is that like the narrative i'm not even sure i don't know and it's like he didn't have like an ongoing problem he wasn't trying to like stop behavior or something he just said he didn't like him so weird okay because i saw so many people bring up jacksepticeye and i'm like damn did something happen with lawyers or something because i have to admit the Rosanna thing is weird it's now. It's yeah. like something's either going on, whether it's behind the scenes, she's either getting sued, threatened to be sued, or she is just getting scared shitless. I have no idea because so when Lily did her update, it was her revoking everything. So we had covered everything and she was like, just kidding. I should have handled this privately. And I was like, what? But at the same time, I have been through a very, very large amount of scrutiny online before. And it feels like you're dying. I've said this so many times on this podcast. Like genuinely, that is such an uncomfortable, scary feeling that I totally understand someone just being like, never mind, can't deal with this. Yeah, like having a moment of realization where you're like, I'm taking it all back. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I also think that that isn't rooted in her thinking that she shouldn't have necessarily. It's just that she wants everything to stop. Exactly. Which is why, you know, so many people, especially the ones who already thought she was full of shit, like they're just like, mm, I knew it. Like that was like the little, I mean, they didn't even need anything to think she was full of shit. So this was just like, oh, of course. Like that was a huge sentiment that was being shared. I don't think anyone thought she was full of shit. They just didn't care. I don't think people were saying that Rosanna's lying. They were just like, why? Like, why are you making a big deal out of it? Well, but the reason why it gets so fucking weird is because then she came back. So that's another update that we have. She came back. Do you have her tweet? Yeah, so if you go to Rosanna's Twitter right now and we're filming this on the 4th, the last tweet is from Halloween and there's her music video that she tweeted on the 28th, but anything about any hide and seek or Mr. B stuff is gone. I love that so many people tried to make it seem like she was doing the music video for views. I'm like, guys, what? First of all, it's a cover. You don't even make money off of covers. Does anybody know that? Well, and I said in my update, I was like, I don't think Rosanna's like trying to launch a new music career. Isn't she on like Food Network? Like, I think Rosanna's doing fine money wise. <laughs> so she had deleted everything and said she should have handled it privately. And then on the first, she tweeted, I redact my apology to Mr. Beast of not settling things privately, which I don't know if redact is the right word. I think she meant retract. Yeah. She means like, I wish that I had never said that I was sorry for doing what I did and that we should have handled it privately. I was fine with what I did publicly. Right. And yeah. then she says, based on recent new information and developments behind the scenes, I have learned that certain issues will never be handled privately. They will only be dismissed or covered up privately. Moving forward, I do promise not to drop an ill-timed music video. Completely poor timing. My bad. And will word things more clearly in the future. Never my intention to downplay anyone's experiences. I think she's referring to the the language that people were saying seemed like she was comparing her situation to like essay allegations and stuff. And then she says, I'm just learning to find my own voice and to be a safe space for others. When I saw that, my assumption was that she had gotten message by other people who have felt hurt by Mr. Beast, which she had already alluded to having those DMs and conversations with people. Yeah, yeah that other female creators had bad experiences with them. Yeah, but I also think maybe even more happened that she just felt like, fuck, like if I I do not say anything or if I don't keep my shit up, this shit's just gonna get blown over and then blah, 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 blah. That's all fine and dandy. But my biggest confusion was when she deleted this. And I was like, wait, what? It could be something as simple as she's going through it mentally. She doesn't know if she should be saying something, shouldn't be saying something. When she does say something, it's like the world is fucking crashing down. Twitter is a cesspool. 
Believe me, I don't go on there. Uh, other than to like send a little gif here and there. But like, honestly, it's so, so, so bad. And when you're in the thick of it, it is fucking hard. I understand that. And I don't know if it's that or if it's what other people are speculating. And they're like, this seems like a lawsuit. This seems like Mr. Beast is like threatening her in a certain way. Here's my thinking is maybe the first time she deleted everything that came from a place of Ooh, make it all stop. This is too much. And then when she posted the next one, then they threatened her with a lawsuit. Yeah, I mean, because I would think that like to delete this the second time definitely would take a lot more like fuck. Like I'm kind of like coming back and being like, I don't apologize and this is how I feel. And to delete that, that would take a lot. I would think it would take a lawsuit for me to delete something like that. Right, because I feel like you wouldn't want to be like, oh, I don't want them to see me backtracking twice. Like it feels like this one had to have been forced, right? Jeez, I don't know. At this point, it's all strange and I'm confused. Similar to how I had said, like it seemed weird that she had originally backtracked because she had like been responding to Keemstar and like really leaning into everything. And then for her to just delete everything was like, that's a shift. But also when she tweeted this, she had also tweeted some stuff. There's one tweet, for example, that I'm assuming it was a joke. She was starting uh, her own league and it had a picture that said HSL for hide and seek league. That's still up though, isn't it? No, no, no. That's gone now too. And even in her bio, it was like quoting Keemstar or something. I don't doubt that Jimmy has the money to sue. Like that's not a good look to sue Rosanna for like just speaking. But one thing that we did show in our last episode was a tweet from Xander, who is a like drama commentary person on TikTok. Funny you say that we showed it because actually for some weird ass reason I have so many oh issues God. in my editing program. I was watching it back and the tweet wasn't there. Every episode there's just a, Lily's like I put this thing there and then it's just like either somewhere random or not there at all. This isn't like shit did I forget? No I vividly remembered resizing it putting the knee on it. Luckily it was the only thing in this track in my editing timeline. The track was turned off so it that tweet visually was not there but I did read it. Oh well we did a little audiobook moment and you guys heard heard the tweet from Xander, who is a drama commentary person on TikTok. And do you want to bring it up so we can refresh people's memory? Yeah. So October 29th, he had tweeted, this just got deep. A woman reached out to me after seeing what happened to Rosanna. This is way more than hide and seek. This woman just told me about her experience with Jimmy in her car as she was giving him a ride in North Carolina. I'd encourage everyone to stop thinking this isn't a big deal, or at the very least, be open to understanding that women will start coming forward. It doesn't look like this tweet got, like, there's not too much graphic on it. It was 39 likes, but we we kept an eye on it and he tweeted on Halloween an update on this. A lot has happened in the last day or so. I'm working closely at the moment with a woman affected by Jimmy to make sure she has her ducks in a row and proof so people won't say she's lying. Also, we talked to a woman in Jimmy's life and she wasn't surprised at all by what happened and he treated her awful as well. As soon as I'm ready to platform her story, I will. I just don't want to be reckless. We got to take our time here because this will probably be the start of a huge situation. Okay, going back under ground for now. So then that brings us to November 3rd. He says, in a few hours from now, I'll be uploading talking about a Lyft driver's experience with Jimmy. I've spoke with this woman extensively and together we have done the research to try and validate it to the best of our ability. Her story is the first of many women who have had awful experiences and have been treated very, very poorly from him. Rosanna's story was a catalyst for her having the courage to speak out. That should be mentioned because so many gave her backlash for speaking, yet it was the courage that finally let other women feel not so alone. That is all for now. I'll tweet the video when it's uploaded. Then we have the video. He tweeted out and said, Mr. Beast allegedly is a serial cheater, a womanizer, and actively treats women in his life badly. And then it links to this TikTok. Mr. Beast is a serial womanizer, cheater, and treats all of the women in his life like trash, allegedly. This story starts at a holiday inn at the Greenville, North Carolina Convention Center. Jimmy ordered a Lyft driver who was driving this specific car. Upon her arrival, she already sees that Jimmy has a camera aimed right at her, which already annoyed her. She was in the middle of hiding from an abusive ex, so she did not really want her vehicle at that time online. He stopped filming as he got in the car and he said an animated hi. She just said a very soft, gentle hi back. He got angry that she doesn't immediately recognize him and is like, don't you know who I am? She's just like, no, should I? He scoffs at her and goes, are you serious? Have you not watched YouTube? He's like, no, not really. He mentions his subscriber account, the people that he's worked with. She just doesn't care. They haven't even moved. He hasn't clicked his seatbelt yet. 
Then he goes, well, I'm famous and I have a big hotel room. Do you want to see it? She says that her boyfriend wouldn't appreciate that. He says, that's okay. My girlfriend wouldn't like it either. And she says, you invited me to your hotel room, but you have a girlfriend? And he said, well, it doesn't matter. I just slept with somebody a few days ago before I flew back. And he says verbatim, I can get any woman I want, which is insane. She immediately shuts him off and just says, okay, can we just go now? At this point, he's just visibly angry and just goes, IDK, are we? We haven't left yet. Because you need to buckle your seatbelt. And this grown man is like, are you serious? Very much, it's the law and I'd like to keep driving for Lyft. He complains, clicks his seatbelt, grumbles the whole time, turns his back and has a man fit, saying, but I'm famous, I'm a big deal. How does she not watch YouTube? I can get any woman I want, like the whole time. They get to the bar, he slams her door, gives her a one star on Lyft. This woman felt comfortable speaking out because of Rosanna. She saw that she wasn't alone and that clearly he has a big problem with women. This driver and I have talked extensively. We have been able to research and try to validate dates, times, locations. At this point, we're just waiting on a few emails back from Lyft. We were also able to get this woman in contact with somebody else in Jimmy's life who was a big part of his life. And this woman who was very close to Jimmy was not surprised, told her that she believes her, that he has a track record of just treating all the women in his life like trash, and that she herself, even being as close to Mr. Beast as she was, got treated absolutely horribly. There are so many more stories out there of women who have been affected by him, but some of the women are terrified, others are just trying to heal from the really deep and interpersonal pain that he inflicted onto them, and then others just see how Rosanna was treated and they just don't really want to go through any of that. This is only the tip of the iceberg. If he was able to treat a woman who he did not even know like that, I can't even imagine what else he has allegedly done. Okay, uh, I'm a little confused by this. I have to be honest. So there's a few things that my mind jumps to. Number one, like I personally feel like the way he was speaking in his tweets very much alluded, especially the whole like she had an experience with him. She was his Lyft driver that very much gave SA in my mind. Maybe that was just me drawing that parallel, but that's no, like I how I it was going to be that. something like he committed a crime or something. Right, yeah. So when you actually boil it all down, because it is a little bit dramatic. I mean, one could say like just kind of the editing of it and stuff. I feel like there's two things my mind goes to. Number one, there really is no way to verify this. If she did not have a camera in her car, you could verify that she was his Lyft driver. You can't verify anything else because you weren't there. But even those... I find it interesting that he says, like, we did all this research and we're waiting on a few emails from, like, there's literally zero actual evidence provided here. Right. And in the tweets before, he kind of said, I'm waiting to gather that to be able to come forward so people do kind of believe it. Listen, I'm not here to say whether that woman's story is true or false or whatever. I do think that if it is true, it's like, okay, so he's a dick. Yeah, I guess it confirms that he is misogynistic. The reason why we're even referencing this is he is, like, this particular... TikTok didn't necessarily pop off, but like his other ones about Rosanna have like hundreds of thousands of views and they go viral and he's talking about Rosanna and the whole situation. Yeah, like his other Rosanna video had 808,000 views. So like he does get a lot of attention on the stories that he covers sometimes. And it's interesting that he went this route only because I feel like this actually hurts Rosanna's case more. And he does tag this woman and not because I think Rosanna lied or anything like that, because I don't quite frankly. And like we've discussed, I don't think anybody does yeah. they just don't give a shit about what she's saying but when you start throwing out shit like this and there is like we're not seeing any proof you're gonna lose a lot of people there like that's just like what are we even talking about at this point is what it feels like someone even comments on it and says this doesn't sound legit at all lol and xana responds and says must have missed the end where i said we researched for a week and talked to other women in jimmy's life but okay smiley face and to that i say you just said that though you didn't show anything so why would that make anyone believe that it's more legit like what do you mean you researched research what you can do all the research in the world but like other people don't know your integrity or like if you're lying or you're not like you have to show things that you have otherwise it's just left up to like oh i guess i believe you then like the people that do believe him in the comments are like oh yeah i could see this 
Yeah, I believe this. Like, they think that about Mr. Beast anyway. Yeah, yeah. it's not like, oh, that's some compelling proof. It's like them just kind of being like, yeah, he's an asshole, which I am not even saying that I doubt that. Also, what is the research? Like, him and the girl researched? Why would she need to research? It's her story. Yeah, and then the person comes back to Xander and says, well, until we actually have proof or any evidence, this is just a random ass story with no legs and doesn't need to be covered. And Xander says, you just purposely choose to ignore the fact that we've talked to the other women who have had similar experiences who he knows whatever goodbye we have no proof of those happening and what other like what women like you're you're it's all very cryptic yeah the cryptic thing is what's getting me and then the person responds to him and says but that's not physical proof which is how the world works so until we get actual evidence of anything it's just a story it's nothing real and then someone else chimed in and said and do any of these women have proof other than stories and i'm guessing not since you just uploaded a vid about this and didn't provide any. I, it's not even saying you need like the other women need proof if they had a bad experience but it's like no one else is even come forward and what experiences what did what happened to me i just feel like this leaves him in a very vulnerable position because like even if he did speak to the woman who knew mr beast or something like he mentions that she used to know mr beast like are they no longer on good terms that's a whole other sticky situation like there's so so much there i'm always inclined to believe like if someone's shit either feels right makes sense i'm like okay like if you're like a victim of someone i'm i'm gonna hear you out what's interesting about this is that he actually tagged the girl who was allegedly the Lyft driver that told him the story and her page has three TikToks and they all have an AI filter over her face. And she's like, I think she's even filtering her voice, right? If she's not, then she should read audiobooks, <laughs> Right? Yeah, she has a very like, it's very robotic. So this is how she explains it. I'm this is the time that I allegedly picked up Mr. What? from Greenville, North Carolina when I was a Lyft driver, allegedly. For legal reasons, I do want to say that this is an alleged story that happened. That seems weird already because why, if it happened to you, would you be saying it's alleged? I don't know. Like, that's, that's not weird, yeah. how that word works. Like, he, Xander should be saying that because right. he wasn't there. So he's just taking this hearsay from her. But if it happened to her, it's not alleged. And she doesn't ever say Mr. Beast, but he is from Greenville, North Carolina, which is not a huge place. And Mr. Hmm. So it's very obvious who she's talking about. But I assume that's also for like legal. Keep in mind that his audience that he has acknowledged firsthand it's a much younger demographic it's not like a bunch of adults are watching his content all the time so it Just keep that in mind that happens okay um i'm no longer a lift driver anymore so that dash cam and the driver's license that i had all that shit that i would have to prove it out the window why would you need your driver's license maybe she means her lift license but why would you get rid of your dash cam that lift doesn't provide dash cams you have to put it in yourself dash cam footage i don't feel like you keep doesn't that like erase after a few days yeah but if you have a quarrel with someone like mr beast you would think you would keep it probably i don't know i would like not to like blackmail him but just be like holy shit this happened what the fuck so this is an alleged story okay okay second i would like to say um i do tell this maybe in a little bit of a choking kind of way because to me it was a very funny story watching him behave this way my humor and laughing about this does not at all mean that i condone his behavior or i think that what he did to these other women was funny in any way shape or form um so please ignore my trauma dark humor and me making jokes about the situation it is not actually funny but to me it is and that's how i heal from things so here we go from june 2018 to april 2019 i was driving for lyft in a little town in north carolina and we wouldn't get a lot of rides just because the town was like really small so on weekends and some odd nights me and my friends would drive to greenville north carolina which was not that far from us and i actually used to live there so it was really easy for me to drive up there for us to make more money it was during one of these Greenville trips that I had the displeasure of picking him up. I had gotten a ping to do a pickup at the Holiday Inn where the uh, convention center is in Greenville. And my first immediate red flag is as I'm pulling up, I noticed that he like has his phone like in selfie mode, like talking to it very like animatedly. And he's also filming my car like as I'm coming up the drive. So I'm already instantly uncomfortable because my, my car is being filmed and I had a lot of reasons at the time. I didn't want my car filmed and put someplace. So he stops filming and opens the door and gets in and gives me a really big, like, animated, hi. Like, his face lights up like a Christmas tree. Hi. And, like, kind of take it, hi. And I notice, like, his face is froze like that. And he's, like, waiting for me to go, oh, my God. And, like, I, I realize now this is the part I was supposed to fangirl over him. But the problem is I didn't know who he was. So at this point, he realizes I don't recognize him. So his smile fades into disappointment. And I get a, don't you know who I am? I say, no, should I? And he like, he looks at me. Oh, well, you just don't recognize me. It's me. It's Mr. It's Mr. Mm, It's me. It's Mr. Mm." And I'm like, yeah, that, no, I'm sorry. I still don't, I don't know who, who, who that is. I'm sorry. He's totally flabbergasted. I didn't get the name drop, but it's me, Mr. Mm from YouTube. It's, it's me. Like, I'm so sorry. I don't actually watch YouTube. Um, it's not really like my thing. 
but I have X amount of followers. Yeah, I'm sorry, I still really don't watch YouTube. I, I, he's now getting a little upset and he crosses his arms. So you don't watch YouTube like at all. I'm honestly just going to be 100%. I don't know that I believe that. Like, I just like the likelihood, even if this story was about Logan Paul and I am not a Logan Paul fan, I would be like, maybe, but also like, what the f Like, that's so, w why would anyone do that? Well, no, it isn't like an initial, like, you don't know who I am. It's like he argues with her about it. And when she says she doesn't watch YouTube, he's just like, but it's me. Like, that doesn't seem like the most likely series of events. I'm just kind of like, oh, shit, what? And here's the thing. I understand that if this story did happen exactly like she's saying it, he's a dick. We also have not contested the fact that he's a dick. Like, I'm sure he's a dick. Like, sure, that's fine. And with the whole Rosanna thing, like, we said it. That makes sense. But... I guess I just don't understand what's happening. I'm kind of just like looking to the side and then I feel like a shit person because I don't want to like tell someone their story isn't true or that I think that, why are we talking about this? Like, I don't want to say that, but like, I'm just like, huh? And even with Rosanna's story, she kind of described that she had a negative experience with him, but he wasn't being an outright, like, it was kind of like a covert dick. Like he was like doing kind of stuff that was like ignoring her basically, not being like, I'm the best and rubbing it in anyone's face. Honestly, where my brain is going is, yeah, she probably did drive him. Like that's why she has proof she did drive him. But does she have proof? We haven't seen it. I don't know. And I'd like to not talk about it anymore because I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I just, I think if you had kept it to, I drove him once in a lift and he was a dick, that would have been. You know what this could have been? This could have been a tweet in response to Rosanna that was I like, drove I drove him yeah. for Lyft and he was an absolute dick one time. And then like message Roseanne about this. And also who's the girl in his life that they spoke to? And why would you use that to support your story when you aren't even gonna say who it is or what they said? That's what it is. Because like now let's say Xander like gets an interview with that girl or like we get to actually see who the woman in Mr. Beast's life was that was confirming all of this in the future. And it turns out all of this was true. And again, she can't confirm this story because again, there's no proof of it, but she could confirm that he's a dick or whatever. Even if that was the truth, I still think that like that should have been presented just because it leaves people like us who supported Rosanna for all intents and purposes, like we did. It leaves us to be like, what the heck is this? I don't know. Like, that's kind of how I feel when I feel like maybe more evidence, if you had it, should have been presented. Like he showed a picture of her car, but I'm like, what am I looking at? I it's like, cool. Like, that doesn't do anything. You know, I'm, again, not even saying you have to have proof, but if you're going to say you have proof, then what did you research? I just don't, I'm just really confused. We did follow it up because we mentioned Xander's tweet. <laughs> Apparently we read it, but we didn't show you. But we talked about his tweet in the last episode, or you did. And like, just because we mentioned that as kind of like a source of like, there's more coming out. This is what came out. So we do feel like a responsibility to share that. And that's why we're doing it. Neither do I, but that's where we're at today. And with our luck after we film this, something will happen. Well, what do you know? Of course, something else happened. We kind of left things on a uh, confused note, you could say, as we wondered when or if at all we would see the proof that Xander had mentioned originally before he posted anything that has not come out yet, but he has released another TikTok and it is in response to a comment on his original video that says, I kind of find it hard to believe only testimony. Xander, is there any proof that you can provide? Which honestly, we had the same question. And Xander responded to that with a video, but also wrote, it's hard for women to come forward after how Rosanna was treated publicly. And here's the video. Really quick and formal video. I completely understand what you're saying here. What's led me to fully believe this story is the fact that I talked to this woman for like a week straight, like day in, day out about this situation, about the half and about the ins and outs of it. And then also getting in contact with other women in Mr. Beast's life who could be like, yeah, he has a track record of this, but none of those women are really wanting to come forward at this time, which puts me in a weird position because it's like, I can present you guys with this information, but not only is it just one testimony, there's no other women who can back this up right now because a lot of them are, for better or worse phrasing like hiding hiding not necessarily wanting to share their trauma hiding not necessarily wanting to share their truth and then also behind the scenes me working with this woman in this video to try to like verify and to get her proof and to get that lift account back and all of those other things it's very convoluted so i can understand why you would have difficulty believing the story but at this time women are scared to come forward and we're waiting on emails from lyft so if you're listening or if you just weren't reading the captions on screen, 
In addition to what he's saying, he has captions on screen that read, no hate, I totally get why it's hard to believe this about Mr. Beast. And when he mentions the other women, there's a caption that comes up that says, I feel like when women feel comfortable, it will be a lot easier to believe when they all come forward. He also writes, I spent a good amount of time doing my own research as well, which again, I'm just confused on what that research is and why he keeps teasing it, but not explaining or showing what any of it is. I also find it a little weird that he keeps referencing the research, but then in the girls' story time, she mentions that she no longer has any of the stuff that would serve as proof. And specifically, she references that she doesn't have the dash cam or her driver's license anymore. And I'm unsure why a driver's license would serve as any proof for anything. Also, if she did have a dash cam, regardless of whether she has the footage or not, that aspect also makes me more confused because in 2019, when she says this happened, Mr. Beast was like having articles written about him. He was like at the top of his game at the time. I mean, since he's obviously gotten even bigger, but it's just kind of hard to believe that he would act the way that she described and also that he would volunteer information like he cheated on his girlfriend and just... It seems like he would be a little more careful how he's portraying himself if he could see that it was being filmed. And then again, it just the kind of vague referring to multiple women that have similar experiences, but he doesn't specify what the experiences might be. Not to mention in his video, he only mentions speaking to one, which he kind of implies maybe is an ex-girlfriend. Also on this girl's story time TikTok, there's a comment that someone left saying, I would anonymously message his girlfriend since he's such an asshole, karma is a bitch. And the girl responds to it and says, oh girl, we've chatted with eye emojis and a uh, manicure emoji. So does that mean she messaged the person that Xander's referring to? Or is this his current girlfriend that she messaged? Because he has a different girlfriend now than he would have in 2019. So it's just a lot of vague information and it makes it all more confusing. And then also he keeps saying he's waiting for Lyft to email them back, implying that Lyft is going to provide some kind of proof Jimmy rode with her maybe. But that doesn't really, to me, seem very realistic because if she doesn't work for Lyft anymore, I doubt you can just like call them up and be like, hey, can you forward me the personal information and complete backlog of everyone I drove in 2019? Like it doesn't seem like Lyft would release that information. That seems like a liability for them. I don't know why Lyft would cooperate at all in that aspect. Like the most they could do is like maybe show dates that she worked. But again, that wouldn't prove anything. So I don't know. But I think that is it for now until I inevitably upload this video and then I'm sure five more updates will come out. But until then. Well, and then on one more note on Mr. Beast, I had a friend send me today that Mr. Beast uploaded a video, which I joked that I'm like, he probably was thrilled that he had this one in the pipeline, given all the things going on right now, <laughs> because it is, I built 100 wells in Africa. And I watched it and Honestly, the conversation I was having with the friend that sent it to me was, I know that people talk a lot about even like on a much smaller scale, like homeless people, if you're filming, giving them money, how do you feel about that? Because it's like, you are still helping someone that needs it, but, but you're if you're doing it for disingenuous the reasons, then like, where does that fall? Like on the morality scale, basically? My friend basically said, well, in this situation, it feels like building a hundred wells in Africa, even if you were doing it because you thought it would be a good video, you're still building a fucking 100 wells in Africa and watching this well, video. Well, isn't that he where does, he falls so much of the time? Yeah, like, but like this video in particular, like it's not just 100 wells. Like he's giving an entire village, all of the kids, he's giving bikes and like he gives so much in this video. It's stuff that is making a huge, huge difference in these people's lives. So it's kind of like, I mean, if he gets some views off it, who really cares if he's helping like an entire fucking nation, you know? Even this video, he says he's gonna donate anything he makes from it. And he also links to his philanthropy to donate to give them more. And these wells, it's not like, this will cover this small village for a year. It's like, for the next 30 years, this entire area is going to have fresh water when before they were having to like make dangerous like treks on a mountain to a contaminated river that they were drinking out of that was making all the kids sick. So also that's another aspect is like filming, you might be like, oh, he's doing it for attention. He's doing it to make himself look good. But also it is spreading the awareness that like, look at the change you can make doing something like this and might encourage other people to do the same. You know, we can criticize someone misstepping or someone possibly being misogynistic 
or being a dick or whatever. But I think even all those things considered, he is, you know, he's doing a lot. You can't say he's not. Well, like I said, like, where does it fall? Like, if you're doing a good thing for maybe not all genuine reasons, but the good thing is so good, like, does that balance out the morality scale a little bit? It doesn't excuse bad behavior, but... You know what? I think that time will tell because I feel like the more that we learn about him and like, again people and Rosanna herself alluding to like, there's more out there and I'm discussing. I think in the future, learning more about him will tell us more about where he falls on that scale. Because if he is someone who like commits crimes or does something really bad, then yeah, there's no, there's no like settling that. That is what it is. A lot of it does for Mr. Beast. And I had mentioned in the last video, too, that a lot of it comes down to like business, like he cares about numbers and money and business and making the best decision that he thinks is going to benefit his company, which again, doesn't mean that there's not misogynistic undertones involved as well. But I think his bottom line is like, how do I like keep furthering my business? I don't think it's how can I be a shitty person? I think maybe he is a shitty right. person in the process of furthering the business, but it's because he's so focused on that. I don't think it's because he's just like flippantly being a dick to people, you know? At this point, I'm kind of just like sitting back considering what Rosanna said like she's spoken to many people behind the scenes and at this point everybody has and I don't know what is what I'm confused but like I'm just kind of sitting back if he does good good I hope he continues to do good I'm just kind of like sitting back and uh, seeing what happens because I'm just confused at this point everybody has something to I say. think at, at this moment in time the worst that we have is that he's an insensitive dick. right correct yeah He's not committing crimes. I don't think he needs to be canceled. I think he is doing way more than anyone else is to help a lot of people. It's just kind of like a, I don't know what the end goal is here. Neither do I, but that's where we're at today. And with our luck after we film this, something will happen. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's all we have for you today. So if you made it to the end, we appreciate and you. Yeah, we'll see you guys on Friday. Bye. Bye. Bye.